Today on Nation, we're talking with Rob Anderson about where you suck at marketing, Facebook branding, just anything about who you are as a company. Stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's going on, everybody? Jersey here from WCR and uh, windowcleaner.com, of course, and you are here. What's going on? If it's your first time here checking out the podcast, welcome. Have a look around. Hopefully it doesn't suck and you want to watch more episodes. This is episode like 110. So you have 110 30-minute episodes going over a couple years. Go back, watch them all, binge on them. Maybe you'll learn a thing or two. Maybe it's just a little bit better than a cat video. Either way, what's up and welcome. Uh, If you are one of the elite, one of the cool kids and somebody who buys your supplies through me, What's going on? Uh, the last one I think I got is I could buy a name brand bubble gum. It was a monster order, uh, and you told me I could buy name brand bubble gum. But if you want to buy your supplies through me, you certainly can. 862 312 2026. That is my direct number. Save it. I want to be a rep. Call me, text me, whatever. And just between you and I, um, Chris is not watching these, but we have something going on right now that if you leave a review on our windowcleaner.com uh, uh, Facebook, I'm sorry, Google page for window cleaning resource, uh, and you put my name in there, say, hey, what's up? They gave us great uh, service and Jersey is awesome. Then I get credit for that too. So go ahead, do that. Put the nation in there. Uh, let them know. And that would be super, super appreciative. Um, also, I want to give a couple quick shout outs to Hugo Vargas, Landon Selman, uh, David Scoville, uh, Ronnie Lopez, the man, the myth, uh, Chet Hingle, and Derek Holloway. What's going on to all of you? Uh, thanks. Every week, I have so many people that uh, order through me, and just even just text me, like, yo, everything's in my cart, put it in. And I can't say what's up to all of you, but uh, keep ordering and uh, I'll get to all of you eventually. But uh, thank you guys very, very much. But today, we're talking about where you suck in marketing. Everybody has kind of lacks in different things. And this is a big one because your brand online is bigger than your brand on any other medium. And uh, we're talking with Rob Anderson, the king of branding himself. What's going on, man? What's going on, Jersey? Excited (laughs) to be here, get this opportunity to be uh, just shedding some knowledge, help these people here. Nice. Well, first and foremost, I know you're going to be at the huge convention and uh, everybody who's seen you before knows you because I don't think I've ever seen you wear a different shirt than what you're wearing now. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we were at a Christmas like training the other day and, and somebody's like, I don't think I've ever seen Rob in a regular shirt. It's like, that's, that's it. That's the uh, <laughs> I've literally got a whole shipment of them, which everyone's not like, eh, this shirt's not clean enough. I'll just grab another one. So I've got like 25 of these shirts available for me whenever I need them. Nice. Isn't it kind of nice though, not having to like decide what you're wearing for the day? You just kind of like pull it off. (laughs) It's awesome. It drives my kids crazy sometimes, but you know, go coach soccer in this, uh, (laughs) go to whatever things and just rocking it. And then it's like, Oh, I can just go ahead and write off soccer. Cool. There there we go. It's more branding. Yeah. Uh, I even thought about outfitting the whole soccer team with these as our our jerseys because everybody in the league wears the same jerseys. And I was like, yeah, somebody somebody would eventually not like it, but man, that would be awesome to see them all running around. That's like a sponsored yeah. team. I'm pretty sure that's cool. Yeah. You can do that. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. But if for anybody who doesn't know you, kind of give us a little bit of a rundown who you are, what kind of company you have, what do you do, when did you get into it? Just give us a little rundown on that. Sure. So uh, obviously with WCR Nation, uh, we also have our YouTube channel. Um, it's youtube.com forward slash clean power wash. Um, Got a little over almost 9,000 subscribers on there right now. Uh, it's a lot about both the technical and the, the business side of it, both marketing, um, growing the struggles that we've dealt with with employees, with customers, uh, learning to make those better decisions and kind of seeing too where we've grown uh, both in what we've got as far as our overall branding and marketing. Um, we do soft washing, exterior cleaning, residential, commercial. Uh, we added Christmas lights on last year, added window cleaning this year, um, do roof soft washing. Um, I'll have guys that'll come down to a visit for a day or two, um, kind of learn some of what we do, play with the equipment, 
um, and kind of get their feet wet. It's, it's a lot of fun to be able to help others and give back in that regard and, and get to the point where after going to these conventions and growing our business, I mean, I used to do 25 grand a year. Um, this year we'll crack that half million mark and trying to see how close we can get to three quarters, uh, this year. So really excited to have that growth. Um, we've got right now six guys working for us, um, an office assistant and we need more people and it's just, it just continues to grow. So, um, and I'm out of Salisbury, Maryland, which if anybody watches the channel, you know that I say that on every single video. So, <laughs> The best thing about uh, the videos too is the Canon stuff. Just you and the camera, like just l l like truth bombs. If that, you mm -hmm. know, phrase hasn't been overused, just that side of it is like being able to see into anybody's business, you know, like that on that kind of open page kind of open book thing, man, that, that wasn't there when I started, you know, years ago. And it, 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 uh, it helps people so much just to be able to see inside of that. Mm -hmm. Like nothing's off limits. I love that. And, and that's, I was talking with my wife too. I'm, I'm very open about numbers and money and all that. And numbers are what they are, whether that offends somebody or somebody thinks it's boasting or not, the numbers are what they are. You know, if we know what anybody makes, whether that makes you feel big or small, that doesn't change the person in their numbers. Yeah. Um, and so being open, I, I hope that those figures and things just kind of help motivate people. You know, it, if, if you're not making that level and you see somebody who's at that next level, it should always motivate you to try and bring yourself up to try and catch them instead of saying, well, it must be nice. They're lucky. They're, they're up there. Yeah. Uh, you know, they had it easier. It's like, no, they, they've worked harder. They've done more. And that's <clears throat> why they are where they are. They've earned it. Yeah. You know, the big thing about numbers that everybody thinks of is it's like this, kind of wear it on your sleeve, like this is my badge, but it's not. When you really look at business, that's just the biggest like, um, like uh, kind of tracking figure is your mm -hmm. gross. Like everybody has that dollar amount in there. Now there's net and there's what you pay yourself and there's uh, what kind of cars you drive and there's all that stuff that is the bragging side of it that you're not even really talking about. It's just the number or the, the kind of way to track what you've kind of brought in. So I, I totally am okay with that whole number thing. Yeah. And again, it, it, it's a motivating factor. Like you said too, I mean, the, the things that, you know, when you first start out, make a hundred bucks a day, you know, make a thousand bucks a week, make 5,000 a week, or, you know, hit 5,000 or in a month, 10,000 in a month, 5,000 a week. You know, we, we got to this year where we started doing $20,000 weeks, which just like, you know, three years ago, it was like, man, we hit 20,000 in a month. Yeah. And it was like, that's so awesome. And now, you know, and those, those levels end up getting to the point where you're, you're no longer impressed with your own numbers. Like, you know, I got to a point last year where I kind of got depressed about it all. It was like, we were killing it. We were up like 80% or whatever for the year. And, and I'm like, man, I feel like I'm, I'm failing. I'm not doing what I need to do this and that. And then stop. And it's like, hold on, reframe and like, look at these numbers and realize like I kicked last year's butt. Why am I not more pumped yeah. about it? And that's, that's like, I think a constant struggle for entrepreneurs. And uh, when we're growing, we just, we always know there's more to yeah. do more to grow um, more potential. You get, you get numb to it too. At a certain point, like there's some times where you'll close a five figure job and the old you would be like, Oh my God, I got to call everybody. And now you close it and you're like, okay, cool. You know, close that folder, you go to the next one and it doesn't even affect you anymore because you're almost numb to it. And uh, yeah. that's where we always say as business people, that's why a lot of uh, small business people have like side hustles or things that they do or adding services because we need that whole, um, that drug of, of, of starting a business and getting all mm -hmm. that. When you get numb to it, you need to find something bigger, something better, like get something to get me excited again. How do I feel that? And that's kind of where uh, guys sometimes lose it a little bit. So in the world yeah. of branding and marketing though, how did you set yourself out to, cause that's a big focus of yours. You knew that kind yeah. of right away is that your brand is who you are and people can recognize that brand. But how do you think that, your branding got you to the numbers that you got and kind of where your speed, what, what would you attribute that to? Uh, so, I mean, especially for somebody early on, 
you know, don't get overwhelmed in figuring that you have to have the logo, the shirt, the wrap, all of that done. You know, branding to a degree comes down to the real basic part of just being seen, making sure that people know that they just have to be aware of you. You know, now we're to the point where, you know, we finally got this logo done about, um, about two years ago. Then got the shirts done. Then we were able, once we had the logo, we could get the wrap done on the truck, which helped bring it all. Uh, fun story too. One of my, one of my coworkers or one of my employees, he, uh, he went over to visit his, um, his brother's house and rings the doorbell and his nephews. And it's like, mom's like, who's that? I guess he's like, it's the power washing guy. <laughs> Not their uncle Jack. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, their whole life. And I'm like, Literally, this has so much going on on it that they miss the fact that it's their uncle. And this kid's like six years old, and he's like, it's the power washing guy, not my uncle, who's like <laughs> the awesome, cool, you know, fun guy. Um, it, it just, we're obviously, we're, we're flashy with it, and we do so much with social media where we literally, it's just about getting our logo, getting our posts, our business anything and everything we can in front of people so many times before they're ready to make that buying decision. So much of what I do marketing wise isn't about the conversion now. Yeah. It's about influencing them. You know, it's just like with, with window. Cleaning. I mean, there's, there's lots of places to get it. And the whole point of getting this promotion with WCR and everything is to, when somebody searches window cleaning, then they look and see Zero. I, I see on Facebook Marketplace, I see y'all's videos all the time and it's all edited and it looks awesome. And I, I usually watch about like 80% of it and then I'm like, oh yeah, I've seen this. It's, it's a good video. I, I, what was I supposed to be doing on here? Yeah, yeah. But it, it's as if, if you're not doing Facebook marketing, you're missing out and Instagram and any of the other social media stuff because it's so stinking cheap. You know, I, I always equate it back to, to, to with this marketing that if you paid somebody to go hang door hangers for a day at minimum wage, that's like a hundred bucks and they might've hit 300 houses, but let's, let's, you know, 400 houses, three or 400 unqualified houses. Exactly. <laughs> Versus I could for a hundred dollars, if I'm not getting that in front of nine, oh no, sorry. Yeah. Like 10,000 people a day for that, which we don't, we, we I joke, I, I spend more money on my lunch most days than I do on marketing, but it's just a continual thing getting in front of people. So, yeah. Um, so, so having kind of the initial, you know, the appearance or the brand is starting to build that you have to be in front of somebody. You can't, you can't eat if you're not sitting at the table. Like you can't, mm -hmm. you can't be at the meeting if you're not in the boardroom. Like those are all the things that you have to be relevant. It's the same reason McDonald's every single you know, I, I, I said it kind of again last night, but everybody knows McDonald's. If you're two years old and over, you know what a McDonald's is, but yet they're on every billboard, they're on every magazine, newspaper, radio, TV, they're everywhere still because they have to be relevant. They have to continue to be relevant. And that's kind of what I think people sometimes miss, especially, you know, say in the EDDM world where they're sending out mailers, they'll put all their things in one basket, they'll send it out one time and they'll just go, okay, I'm going to be a millionaire. And then nothing happens and they go, well, what the heck? I, I can't yeah. send to those guys again. I, I, I put it out there and 2,500 people saw that. Yeah. Not really. The, the way the world works now is that everybody's goldfish. Like you have to be, you have to be in front of them. How many times, like you said, those videos you see from us, you may watch them still. You may look at them. You may get caught up in them, but those videos are on there. You're going to see them every single day, multiple mm -hmm. times because with content now, and especially in the media of like Facebook and, and Google and ads that way, it's a scrolling kind of society. So you can't make too much content. You can't put too much yeah. content out. Every little bit kind of helps. Well, that Gary Vaynerchuk's a huge influence on me, just watching all of his stuff. And, and he keeps going out there. Like if you're not producing a hundred pieces of content a day, you know, you're, you're losing, you know? And as we go through all of this, I mean, that's why I started the YouTube channel. Yeah. I knew that I could help people. I wanted to make training videos for my employees, but I also knew that long term, you know, it's, it's Google, Yahoo, or sorry, Google, um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. I mean, th those are the top traffic sites. And if I can show up on YouTube, number one, when somebody searches power washing in our area, 
because I have now like 900 videos and we've got, you know, we've got one video that's got just over two, two point something million views, which mm -hmm. is just nuts. It's us cleaning a bench that we cleaned for free forever yeah. ago. Um, Best bench you've dude, ever cleaned. <laughs> dude, it's, it's amazing. Um, but it, it does, it, it just gives, the content that we produce today will continue to build in our marketing and continue to build people. And it doesn't matter if only one person watches this episode, you know, yeah. today, because if it's out there for the next five, 10, 15 years and you get one view a day, that's lots of views. That's every single time that happens. That's something um, where it's another opportunity for Google to look at, hey, there's fresh content linked back to Clean Power Wash or linked back to WCR. It's another upvote. And we've got that ability to create that content. Um, and it's it's all right here. Yeah. Just record. Just, In the, you know, yeah. I was going to say the crazy thing about content too is no matter what changes with the algorithms or the – the science behind because Google changes literally mm -hmm. almost every day so that people can't kind of hack the system, which I totally get. But the one thing that's always going to be constant always is content. You can't have mm -hmm. two years of content and then Google change their algorithms and that two years worth of content still not be completely relative as far as like what makes you better than the next guy who's just starting it now. Exactly. And, and that's where I go back to, um, again, going back to Gary Vane. Um, thank you economy, you know, that customer service, that appreciation, that is going to work, you know, with crushed it, getting on those things where you're creating a personality. I mean, yeah. before, before I started making the YouTube channel, before you started making WCR nation, it's like we were just regular guys, but because we've done this, we've invested that time. We've gotten to the point where you go to an event like the huge convention and people are coming up like, thanks man. I appreciate all that you've done. Thanks for the videos. I mean, I was referred from another friend, uh, Jake Deal, told me to, to reach out to you for the water pipe poles we bought. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't, I didn't shop anywhere else. You know, I was specifically referred to you because of how you've taken care of him and because of that branding. We, we have that opportunity, too, to reach people that are actively looking and people that are casually glancing over there and getting them to be more curious about what we're doing and bring them into the fold. Yeah. Uh, What's, what's interesting about that too is that we don't, nobody has, uh, let me rephrase that. A lot of people have still just customers. They have just mm -hmm. people who hired them because of what they do, but there's a lot of us out there who have fans. And if you have a yep. fan, they were going to hire you because you're you, not because of yep. anything else, you know, but you have to get them to find you first to be a customer than to earn them as a fan. And uh, I really think that's huge. Creating a brand, even as a person, I mean, Listen, my name is Jersey on this thing, you know? I mean, that's it. I, I literally own a company for the sales and other backside stuff. That's called Jersey LLC. That's my company, you know? So yes. it's a brand. You have to create this brand yeah. because if you can go across everything, that's exactly like you said. Like, there's there's nothing better than the the other side of the the pictures people take with you and the people who interrupt conversation. I'm sorry, just interrupt you. Just, you've helped me so much. Like that kind of stuff means those are fans. Those are people who yeah. would go to the ends of the, those are the people who call me or text me every morning. I wake up and see five, 10, 20 new texts from people who say, Hey, everything's in my cart. Go ahead and put the order in. They're only going to order through me. They're only going yeah. to use me. And that's awesome. That's the biggest high five back for anything you've ever produced. Yeah. We, we misplaced all the fittings and I was like, crap uh crazy just send me more i didn't ask how much it costs i did you know and, and you know we got the fittings we managed to make it through that day um and then when we we're cleaning up we finally found them uh <laughs> always right <laughs> yeah so now i have like nine of the same fitting but um it is i mean that that's the why we make content why we do this marketing too is that it, it just continues to do it. Instead of us having to repeat and have this conversation in front of people every single time with digital media, what we have is that opportunity to continue to get that message in front of people. Yeah. Um, and that's where again, getting them to like, you know, you trust you and then eventually they are going to buy something and they're going to buy from you. Yeah. And that's, that's where we are with pressure washing. We don't usually run in. And I say this as it's July. So, uh, we are going to run a couple of deals to try and get you know more business coming in, um, but 
almost all of my marketing is literally like, hey folks, here we are, we're doing this job, here's the pictures from what we did, um, and some of the random stuff. And then eventually, you know, some of the, some of the folks will say, hey, you know, if you got a dirty roof, give us a call, here's our number. But it's not a hard pitch. It's like, hey, save 50 bucks today with this offer. Refer your friends and emojis, emojis everywhere. Yeah. It's like, just be authentic. I mean, people either like you for who you are or they don't. Yeah. What, what do you see like the biggest downfall, which you've already touched on, and I know that's where you're, you're kind of going in that, but what's the biggest downfall that you see other people doing in their Facebook? Like they may do a bunch of posts. I know a lot of people, everything they've ever put on their Facebook page in the business is get your windows clean because of this. Look at us clean these windows. You can have yours clean too. And everything is a sales pitch. I know that's a huge place that people lack is creating actual content. People want to, you know, see and not just a Times Square ad. But where do you think that people are lacking in different categories when it comes to say Facebook marketing? Uh, number one is people not posting, period. Uh, number two is again, the every post being a sale, every post being an ask, you know, you give, 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 ask. Yeah. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to be a spokesperson for Gary today. <laughs> <laughs> another, another great one, but you got to get, there's a Knight Rider audiobook version of it, but uh, love that. But for, for us with power washing, our before and afters are awesome. I mean it, and for window cleaners, um, you know, now that I have some of the equipment, I notice dirty windows a little bit more, but it's hard to photograph. Yeah. And I think for every window cleaner out there, people need to see you or they need to hear you or they need to see something going on. Video and live video is the, the top thing and it always will be. You know, yeah. more people want to watch, you know, watch Seinfeld when it was live, you know, in the new episode because it was new, it was going on right then. Yeah. Then all the other follow up reruns of it. Like we want to watch it when it's new and live. So you make those videos, but show like, Hey, this is Jersey. I'm out here cleaning these windows. Look at this. I'm cleaning up top, whatever. I'm right on the ground. I'm safe. Look at this process. And people are going to pay attention to that more than, Hey, do you see this? This window is clean. That one was dirty. Now it looks better. Can you really see it? <laughs> I think I see the smudges. Like it's, Russ, it's, it's a, filthy greenhouse or a filthy roof that's got moss and then it's beautifully clean or concrete. So for you window cleaners, show what you're doing, talk about what you're doing. And if you're camera shy, just show the water fed pole going up and down on it. And people are like, Oh, that's really cool. Like, Hey, look, it goes up 60 feet. Yeah. Like it blows people's mind when you do that. With and then that gives something to, to see, to get that attention. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's fun of it. Yeah. With pressure washing, the big thing too is that when you show black concrete, you know, greenhouses, everybody looks at it and goes, oh man, that's exactly what mine looks like. But when you mm -hmm. look at windows and if they're dirty, so dirty that you clean them that they're actually impressive enough for pictures, people look at them and go, well, my windows aren't that dirty, you know? So yeah. it's like this weird discourse. But the live thing just makes you seem like a person. You're a real person. If you're live, they can see you. You can stutter over words. It's, you know, it's real. And that, that's the fun of it, too. I mean, you don't have to be Brad Pitt to, you know, to get people to pay attention to you on it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's plenty of people that, you know, have a, have a face for radio. But, you know, ultimately, your customer is going to see what you look like. They're going to see that gigantic growth out of the side of your face um, or that you've got a unibrow or whatever else. Like, go ahead and get it out there right then and there. So they know you right there. And like when we go up to do an estimate, if somebody's come through us through Facebook, they already know what we look like. They've seen our process. There's so much of the education side of it is done. It's a matter of what do they need to do? How much are we going to charge them? And is that close to what they were thinking or yeah. just not, oh, it's 10 grand to, to clean your house. And we're like, uh, I thought it was going to be five bucks. Yeah. Like they've already decided that they like you. And that's, that's the best customer you can get right there is somebody who's already chosen you. And as long as the price isn't crazy, it's your job. Yeah. You know, it's your job yeah. to lose. Yeah. That, and, and I like that you hit on that kind of being real. Uh, people hire small businesses because they're real. They know they're helping some mm -hmm. little girl go to ballet or, or some little boy's softball team or baseball or T-ball or whatever. 
that's being real. I, I, I've had things that I've done promotions that haven't done as well because they were so professionally done. You know, they were super glossy mm-hmm. and everybody's, oh, that's too expensive. I've had things where I've, I've been a radio for years and years and years before this. And I do voiceovers and things like that. And if I decide to have a radio voice, that's how I used to do my answering machine. People would call and think they got some like 1-800 number kind of style. Like, oh, I got your Mm -hmm. answering service. I don't know. It was just me recording my voicemail. If you sound or look or everything is so polished, people lose that connection. You know, like there's there's models out there. They're not looking to hire those. They're looking to Mm -hmm. hire people. And it's it's also something too, I mean, go back and look at my first YouTube video, go back and look at your first podcast. You know, it's like the, we all get better at it. We all grow with it. Um, it, it's just, it's that we're progressing. And yeah, you realize too, when you're recording, you know, that selfie video, oops, I said that wrong. Delete. Yeah. You know, when you start doing live, yeah, you're going to mess some stuff up live, but man, the upside is so worth it. It It's awesome. It's our one of my, as a yeah. Well, well, here's another kind of concept on that marketing and branding thing, but people sometimes lack in the Facebook side of it. They don't post enough. Uh, they're posting kind of the wrong content, but here's a question for you. Who do you think people should be when they're marketing? Like who are they actually marketing? Are they marketing the services themselves? Are they marketing the person? Are they marketing the price? Are they marketing like, where is your kind of goal when you're marketing yourself and kind of branding yourself out there? Um, I think it's important and both long-term on it that, that you're making sure that you're branding the company substantially, that it's not that they're hiring Rob Anderson to wash their house. Um, I am the spokesperson. My guys are on some of the other videos. Um, I think last year, you know, we, I don't know, we've got a little over 2000 customers right now. I think three people last year contacted me or basically complained in some way, shape or form that they assumed since I'm in all the videos that it was going to be me doing the work. Yeah. Um, and we decided to explain to them that, you know, it's, we've grown. I'm not on the truck all the time. I mean, that's, that's the goal and that's because we've been successful there. Um, so, you know, I always say it's Rob Anderson, clean power wash stalls by Maryland. We're over here doing X, Y, Z. Um, so that if it gets to that point too, that I want to have some of my other guys, you know, becoming the face of it, or at least having their face on more of it, they're still seeing our overwhelming uh, logo. They're seeing the brand. They're getting to know us as a company. Um, I, I think that's you know, long term. It's it's about clean power wash. It's not about me. Nice. I yeah. like that. I like I like that concept. Just in the side of things that there's a lot of people out there that say, um, well, my, my customers, especially if they don't have employees, they say, well, my customers, they wouldn't let somebody else. It's gotta be me. I I can't have employees. They wouldn't let that. That's wrong. Like your customers, you know, may say something about it, but if they can get and build a connection with your employee, just like they could you, then that's all. Like people sometimes feel like they're more important than they actually are. And they feel like, it's them that sold it and not kind of what they stand for. And I think that's a big problem sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, marketing in Facebook is, is, is big in general. Uh, a lot of people kind of do miss it because they think it's expensive. They think it's the old uh, AdWords kind of campaign stuff. Talk to us a little bit about targeting. Where are people targeting? What do you look for when you're doing your targeting in your Facebook ads? So that's, that's kind of the interesting thing with it. I, I do so much of Facebook marketing wrong, quote unquote. Um, our overwhelming focus with all of our marketing on there is engagement and awareness. Um, it's not about closing the deal. Um, so what we do and, you know, Last August is when they took away targeting homeowners, excluding renters, and a bunch of other criteria. We used to do that. We would just set our age range, the location, um, and you know, homeowners excluding renters. I don't dig yeah. too deep into the specific customer avatar, um, and I think people put too much faith in finding that exact perfect person. Right. Um, you know, a good buddy of mine, Jeremy Dent talks about he's like you know he's like i've had people that are 19 years old hire me i've had people that are 95 years old hire me 
Um, it's about, you know, it, it's not necessarily as efficient, but you know, if I market to everybody in my market, that's, you know, between 33 and 63, that's 90% of the people that'll hire me. Um, targeting wise, we're, our goal with most of our posts is to see 40 to a hundred likes, hearts, engagements on it. And I spend money on those to get them in front of people, usually three to five bucks a day per post. And I'll run most of my posts for 10 to 14 days, just so we're constantly getting new stuff in front of them. And, but not every post. Yeah. You know, I always equate it to, you know, a fire that's burning or wet logs. Like you can dump lighter fluid on both of them. Where is it better to spend the lighter fluid on the one that's burning? Well, now you're going to take this okay fire and make it like a gigantic bonfire versus if you put it on wet logs or a crappy post, Yeah, not much is going to happen. Like it'll flame up real quick. Yay. 8,000 people saw it and only six reacted. Yeah. I don't want that. I'm not going to spend the money there. I'm going to look at these ones where like we get some awesome wood cleaning pictures and say, this is going to go viral anyways. I'm going to go ahead and give it, you know, give it some extra oxygen, give it some extra fuel and let it go to town. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's what I like to do. It's nice. It's fun. If, if you of all things that you do, everything that you are from, from branding to website, to advertising, to Facebook ads, if there was one thing that you think that people should uh, put more focus to, which, which avenue is it? Uh, I, Facebook, man. I mean, when you get on this Facebook, and obviously with both of our fields, Instagram is, is huge as well. Um, both the cost per impression, the cost to get in front of somebody is just infinitely small in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Um, Best bang for your buck. It, it's amazing. You know, when I looked at it last year, I, I think I averaged $17 per job from Facebook customers, hmm. not per yeah. lead, per converted into a paying customer. It's 45% of what we've done this year. Um, and I keep telling myself I need to spend more and more and more money on it. And, um, we just, it just keeps building. And the, I, again, I quit back to farming too. I mean, you can take the best seeds in the world, the best manure in the world and a whole bunch of water and throw it in a pile and not much is going to happen. Yeah. If you spread that out, if you till the ground, if you give it time and let it grow, well, it's the whole, it's going to just keep growing, growing, growing. You know, what we did a couple of years ago was like 26 or $35,000 worth of business from, from, um, Facebook. And then we did like a hundred, we broke a hundred last year and work from it. And we're, we'll probably do a quarter million in work from just people that we get from Facebook. Yeah. And it's, we're doing more on it, but we've also, you know, we've gone from 400 likes to 900 likes to now we're at 17 something. Wow. You know, you always want more likes and the more people that like you, the more people that will organically see you and the more people that will see you because Facebook's saying, okay, well, Hey, 20 people over here, they liked it. We showed it to them. Like Facebook wants to keep you on there. So if they look at something and says, Hey, this is engaging, it's going to continue to put towards that to say, Hey, more people check this out. Um, so yeah. Speaking of more people, tell us one more time what your uh, YouTube channel is. And if anybody's listening or yeah. watching, you have to go and subscribe by the way you have to. So you can find me youtube.com forward slash um, clean power wash. Um, you can hit me up. The public profile I've got is facebook.com forward slash CPW Rob. Um, that's where you can follow and I don't have to friend you. Um, and that's a better spot to message me. Don't message me on the uh, clean power wash Facebook page because then that dings me and you're not a customer. <laughs> so I don't want my response rates to be, you know, somebody who's asking, Hey, how do I clean this roof today? Yeah. Send me the message to CPW Rob. It's, I really appreciate it if you do that. Um, and then if you're East Coast or wherever and you want to come down for a day or two, uh, play with some tools and equipment, uh, just give us a couple days notice and come on down. Uh, we'd love to be able to give back, help people see that kind of stuff. And it's, it's a, it's literally, it's a game changer in your business. And if you can't find, if you can't make it here, find somebody within 
three to five hours of you, you know, just literally start calling anybody and everybody or message me and I'll find somebody that's out that way that will let you do a ride along to, to kind of test this out. Yeah. Uh, so that's awesome. Well, I appreciate you uh, hanging out. He's going to be at the huge convention this year too. So I believe signing autographs. Uh, so if you want to go Thank see Rob, five bucks and drinking craft beer. <laughs> There you go. Exactly. Um, but no, guys, if you haven't gotten your tickets to the huge convention, uh, get them the huge And more importantly, if you are looking for any window cleaning or pressure washing supplies, please do let me be your rep. Want to be your rep. My number is 862-312-2026. That is a cell phone. So you can text me, call me, whatever you want. And we'll get things ordered. Thank you to all of you who do already order. Even Rob is uh, one of my uh, clients. So super, super awesome. Um, but yeah, go out there, learn all you can, be better at uh, marketing and branding. And uh, until next week, go out there. And I'm sorry, let me start over. I got a 5% discount code that I almost forgot. Uh, this week, if you call me and put an order in, your 5% off discount code is going to be Rob. You tell me that and that will be your discount code. So go out there, do that, and uh, until next week, be epic.